When I was first getting started with Notion, I compared it to Excel and I figured, oh, this probably works how Excel works. They both have tables, they both have formulas, but boy was I wrong. Notion and Excel are totally different. And if you are just getting started with Notion, you might be stuck in that old Excel paradigm that you might be used to because it's been around for so long and so many people use it. But today I'm just going to explain the difference between Notion and Excel, more specifically Notion databases and Excel spreadsheets. If you have questions about Notion or if you have questions about this video, the best way to get in touch with me is to tweet at me. So definitely tweet at productive underscore dude on Twitter if you have any questions. And don't forget to follow me for bite-sized Notion and productivity related content. We'll see you on Twitter. In Notion, our databases are made up of columns, which represent the different properties that are available to you, and rows where you can create a page that's related to these different properties. In Notion, it's mandatory that each row gets a page, and that's this name column here. By default, it's called name. You can change the name of this, but what you'll notice is you cannot delete this name column. It's mandatory, right? So this is actually a page that gets added to your Notion database. You can open it. You can see all of the different properties that are related to it, like this tags property here. You also see it in the table view. Now, the other thing to mention about Notion is you can view this in many different ways. If I go to layout here, it's very simple to switch between a table, a Kanban board, a timeline, a calendar, a list, and a gallery view. Now, while this is possible to view data in a similar way in Excel, it's very difficult and it's going to require lots of formulas and lots of referencing to these different items that you're trying to pull from. But in Notion, it's very simple. You just change your layout here and you can view your data in different ways. Now, I'm going to be explaining Excel here in Google Sheets, and I'm sorry for those of you who are Microsoft fans, but I've never been able to jump on board with Microsoft. Uh, I just prefer this free alternative that has almost all of the features that I personally need. So this is Google Sheets, but it's similar enough to Excel that I think I can use this for my explanation today. And I'm sorry for those of you who are being blinded right now. Google Sheets does not have a built-in dark mode, unfortunately, at least that I could find. Now in Excel or Google Sheets, we still have columns and we still have rows, but the way that they're treated is different. You can think of Excel as an open canvas where you can add information in any of these individual cells. It's a lot more cell based. We aren't stuck with just a simple name column, tags column, and a formula column. For instance, if I wanted to create a formula in this cell, I could create a formula that has to do with anything within this spreadsheet or even on another sheet if I wanted to add another sheet. I can reference any cells with a formula, whereas in Notion, we can only reference the other properties within its specific row that we're referring to. So imagine being stuck just confined to this row right here with your formula in Excel. It certainly wouldn't be very flexible. However, Notion will be more useful to people who want to simplify and organize things, whereas Excel is going to excel, no pun intended, at things like finance, right? Where you have lots of numbers pulling from all different places and you need to create a financial tracker. Finance is something that I've tried to do in Notion and I've even watched some tutorials, but it just feels like you're forcing it when you're trying to do finance in Notion. Whereas in Excel or Google Sheets, it's so much easier to get exactly what you're looking for and to be able to sum the numbers from different places, bring them where you need to see them, and so on. Now, calculations are possible in Notion. You can calculate different things, but you can only calculate within the same column that you're focusing on. So if I wanna calculate something in this column, I could hit calculate here and I could do one of these calculations. I'm going to delete this date property and I'm going to show you also how formulas work because formulas only work within the row that you're in. So this formula only works in this row. This formula only works for this row and so on. Whereas this calculation only works for this column. This calculation only works for this column. And we have this mandatory page here that's related to all of these different properties that you can add here as columns. 
So let's go ahead and create a number. I'm just gonna show you, actually let's create two number properties here. I'm just going to show you how we can do calculations in Notion. And this will help you visualize it a bit. So here we're just gonna add four, five, and seven. And here I can calculate, and if I wanted to, I could sum these numbers, I could average them, I could do anything that I want, but only with this calculation in this column can I do that. Now, if I wanted to affect a row, I could put some numbers here, but I can only calculate with this formula within this row. So I can go prop and I can select number plus number one, which is referring to these different properties here and hit done it's gonna add these two numbers together. But there's not a way for me to use this formula in this row to calculate all of these numbers, for instance. Whereas in Excel, I could have a number property here, a number property here, and these actually aren't even properties. I'm just saying property to relate it back to Notion, but I could have a 10 and a 10, and we could put our formula all the way over here. You know, I could equal this plus this, and it would work. Or I could even go ahead and add a number over on a separate sheet. And I could add that as well. Plus, I could go grab my 40, hit enter. And that formula is going to be able to handle something more complex and freeform like that. Whereas in Notion, we're stuck to the columns and the rows that we're referring to at that specific time. So this is my best explanation of the differences between Notion and Excel. There are probably a lot more, but I think that this video distills down everything that you need to know when you're making your decision about which one you should go with. Again, Notion is better for organizing things in general, things like tasks, notes, much, much better for things like that. Whereas Excel is better at handling lots of numbers, maybe your financial transactions, things like that. So I hope this video helped you and I hope that it enlightened you on the paradigm that you need to have going into Notion and the old school paradigm of Excel. All right, we'll see you in the next one.